Hey guys, what's going on? Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Uh, today's gonna be a fun day. I already started working on the RX-7 just off camera a little bit. I'm gonna go into a little more deep detail as to how far I got into it. Um, still haven't got the dash completely out, but I'll show you just kind of how far I got. And just for any guys maybe in the future who d does happen to take a RX-7 FC dash out, I'll kind of explain uh, how you would get it out in a proper way. Uh, but also too, I'm not technically wanting to take out the dash completely out. I just want to lift it enough so I can just so I can get that carpet completely out without having to cut it away because not gonna lie, I did have the idea of just cutting it away, but at the end of the day, I just wanna know how to take it out properly in case I do replace the carpet later on, or in case if I want to maybe take the dash out, I might as well just learn now and get it done and over with. There are a couple cracks that I did find in the dash that I want to take care of. Um, not actually on the top of the dash, just like where it gets kinda covered up. So I want to take care of that, show you guys how exactly you go in and like weld those cracks maybe with like a soldering just so you can try to make it a little bit stronger than it actually is but right now we're going to actually install a three or sorry a speaker system that my buddy gave me when I moved in so that's what I'm doing right now get a little surround sound set up in the garage that way it has it to, so it's not so quiet out here I'm not having to listen off my phone so we're just gonna hook this bad boy up I think I'm gonna get this piece here mounted up just in the corner here just so I can have a nice little speaker there. And I also have another one here that's gonna probably either go on top of maybe the toolbox right here or maybe in the corner depending on how long the wire is. But then also two, I'm gonna probably put this, this is just like where the hub is I guess. It's just a little bit, old, little bit of an older one but you can still do auxiliary and stuff like that which is more than enough that I can do. Probably just gonna put it up here in the toolbox and then I'm gonna put this sub probably just right on top of here so that way it's kinda of a little bit out of the way. It's not taking up any of my floor space there. So let's have some fun, install that, and then we're gonna work on the RX-7 just in a little bit. Okay guys, so obviously you see that we got the two speakers installed. I'm just writing the wires to the little uh, uh, hub there, I guess. The only thing is, I guess the far speaker, the wire just isn't long enough. It comes to about, roughly about here from over there, just because I kind of want to run it behind the piece of wood there. So I came up with the idea, since we're going to be mounting this one right beside it, I'm just going to tape it, this to roughly where it needs to go once that's there then I'm gonna cut that off and hopefully that's what gives me enough wire to uh, finish the speaker so and then I'm gonna solder the wires together so I'll show you a little bit of how I do that and then hopefully everything is long enough in order to get it to a little uh, little hub there so or hopefully there's enough wire to get it there essentially Okay guys, so as you can see I got the two wires together, uh, just twisted the wires together but I'm going to also solder them together to make it nice and strong and that way it's not going to cause any issue for later on. So also make sure, never forget to put that to a shrink tube because you're, you look at it after and uh, start cursing and swearing. So always don't forget that. But uh, here we go, my solder should be hot enough now. Now a lot of, there's different ways to solder, I've seen guys either go under and then they'll wait for it to get hot enough and then they'll put it up top. Good way to check to see if it's hot enough, just touch the actual tip, obviously if the solder starts coming off you know the tip's hot, hot enough. But uh, what I like to do is just I go kind of like beside it, kind of run it through. But because it's such small wiring it's honestly not going to need a whole heck of a lot. 
And because there's no, not gonna be any tension on it either, once it's cooled down, if there's any pieces, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but you got a little piece of sticking up in this wire right here. So usually what I like to do if you have any pliers around or anything where you can kind of squish it together. So what I like to do is just take that, just squish them together so that way you're not gonna have any problem with uh, that poking or poking through the, the shrink tube. So make sure the shrink tube's over nicely on, over the whole thing too. Grab a heat gun or in this case a lighter. That's pretty much it obviously for uh, soldering. Honestly there's not much to it. You just want to make sure that it's all properly together. And if you use butt connector obviously it's going to do the same thing. I just I find solder is going to be a lot stronger and you just know it's going to turn out uh, a better looking job as well too. I finally got the speakers installed um, with the hub that it comes with and the uh, sub. I just put the sub up top because honestly I didn't want to take any more space off my uh, workbench and I figured might as well put it up there. Uh, would love to get a full surround sound maybe in each corner. I think that would be pretty cool. But at the end of the day, just to show you exactly what I did. So one speaker is in the corner underneath the shelf and just run one wire all the way through. Another speaker right here. Right, all the wires just behind there. There's a positive and a negative that goes in the back of the both. And then the actual plug goes into the sub here and then travels to back to this uh, little hub thing. I don't know what you'd even call it. But uh, also too, I ordered off Amazon, a nice four foot long light that's gonna go here as well too. Just cause when I find that when the doors open, it kind of takes away from the light that's underneath here and I just find that since I put it here I just like to like for this workspace to be as bright as possible because you never know obviously whatever you're working on you don't want to make any mistakes or you want to see all the light that you can have so and plus there's only like 30 bucks so just gonna put it right up top of here and it's gonna have a little switch where I can just oh turn it on and off right there anyways that's how you're gonna install speakers I know this video is supposed to be more on the RX7 we're gonna get to that right now but I just don't know how much I'm going to get to it because I feel like I spent all day, had to run to the store, and you can only get curbside pickup in all the stores. You can't go walk through, buy anything. So, and it's obviously ready for the next day, not the same day. So it just made it a little more frustrating going to store to store to store that what it felt like was the longest part of the day. Just to show you exactly what it sounds like. Just to turn it up here for you. Couldn't be more happier with the uh, the outcome. Honestly, sometimes it gets so boring and so lonely being in the garage without having uh, either someone here to talk to or whatever the case is. So it just honestly is a huge addition to the garage. I mean, obviously, it's going to be getting warmer in the next couple of days, but it's just been so cold and so windy the last couple of days that just it's been harder to work outside on the RX7 or just even work here alone because I just don't have the insulation in here yet which is causing it to just um, either not fun to work out. I mean, obviously I get it, it is what it is, but um, let's get uh, going on the RX-7 and have some fun for that for a little bit and kind of go from there. Okay, so I just wanted to go over everything that I've done just in the last, uh, I was working on it last night just to go over everything, just to show you exactly how I got it apart, what I did. Um, just to start from left and we'll go over to the right. So over here, there's a couple things that you will need to assemble, especially for the steering wheel. The, you're gonna see two covers, top and bottom. For this one, there was only one bolt holding it on. I guess there should have been another one on the other side, but I'll have to replace that later on. There's gonna be two big 12 mil bolts just on the top of this. That's what actually connects the steering shaft to the actual dash. So once you get that off, it's gonna be kind of free floating there. Uh, another bolt that uh, two bolts are going to be right here. There's going to be two 10 mils here. Make sure you take the dash apart. There's going to be three screws along the top, and then there's going to be two screws on each side underneath the bottom over here. Uh, honestly, the plugs came out really easy, so I was really happy about that. This I'm still kind of tackling with. 
just because it looks like there's kind of a lot going on behind it. But then I kind of realized, well, I don't really necessarily want to take the dash completely out. I just want to lift it up so that way I can take the carpet completely out. Uh, it looks like I might have to take off that uh, e-brake there, which is fine. So when we got to the middle here, all this had to come off. You know, honestly, it was just little small screws. On the top here, there was little the lights that uh, for like your uh, if your hatch is open, stuff like that. Uh, just to show you exactly what that looks like right here. So you're gonna see these two little holes on each side. Uh, sorry, just one on one side there. There's the, there was two little screws that come out of that, and then just some plugs there. But behind the plug which got me for a little bit behind the plug there's going to be another 10 mil nut that goes way back there i don't know if you guys can see that or not but that was uh there's gonna be one there as well too there's this little cover that goes here honestly that just pops off that was really easy just two little clips other than that oh uh also two took me a hell of a time to find it but if you pull the carpet back there's actually two 10 mil bolts here, one here, one just in the back here as well. Same on the other side. Honestly, it took me an hour just to find that because I thought it was holding it from in here. But now you can see that it's actually nice, nice and free there, which is uh, obviously a good thing. Now, just to tell you a little bit uh, what I was saying earlier about plastic welding. So see how there's a, I don't know if you can see in the camera. Ah, uh, looks like you can. Just in the, right here is a crack here. Well, I'm finding more and more as I go through the car. It might have looked like the dash was already taken out before, which whatever. But at the same time, I just want to make sure, just to give it more strength and agility, I'm going to take a wood burner that I have that also comes with like a little plastic welding kit, just in order to reseal that, just to try and make it a little bit more stronger. I don't know if you guys want to make any suggestions about that. I'd love it just to if you think it's worth it or do you think it's not even worth the time so other than that uh, similar bolts just over here the 10 mil are going to be on the other side just make sure you pop off the cover i mean all in all it looks pretty free as you can see i'm, I'm wiggling it back and forth it just feels like there's some rigidity or some strength still still up top there i don't know if it's screws holding it in or if it's um if it's just clipped in because i don't know if this is if you see here maybe through the windshield you can see how there's a line that goes all the way across in the dash see right uh right there it goes all the way down and i just don't know if that's separate or if that's together because i was watching one video of a guy removing a fc dash and he said that typically there's going to be like four eight mil bolts up top but unless they're underneath the little, uh, like the air shroud or whatever, I don't know if that just pops off. Maybe I'll check that just to see to make sure. Okay guys, so as I was going a little more deeper, there's a little cover here. Uh, not too sure where I put that out, just right here. Fortunately, the tabs broke, but it does look like somebody, again, was here before because they tried gluing it back on uh, before so found a little screw if you can see that just uh, poking up there I already got it loosened so just taking that out now now also too just make it look more and more confusing as I'm going more and more so as you can see when I am pulling this back I don't know if you can tell but it seems like the whole thing's moving with it but then right here it just seems so stiff i pulled this back just to see and then if you look out here sorry if it's a little bit windy on the camera but there's a screw right there so again i'm just trying to think if that's a part of the dash or if it's just part of how it's mounted so it's just more and more complicated Okay, that definitely looks like it'd be a part of it because see how it, it would sl slide in and slide back but I don't think this is going to be a part of holding that in or not I think that's just holding 
that air duct allowing the air to shoot up. So I'm gonna leave that for now, see if there's more bolts underneath. And then go from there. I mean, we're almost about to taste victory, boys and girls. So it's just a matter of getting it out. Jeez, I mean, I just wanna, uh, I mean, it's not like it matters anyways. I can't get the car safety because of the whole COVID-19 thing. But at the same time, I just want it done. I just want it to, uh, just so I can start worrying about other things. I still gotta get the bike done and all that stuff. But anyways, I'm rambling on. Let's uh, get this car done. Let's uh, try to get this dash out. All right, so. So I've got the dash out, obviously, that you can see. Um, I'm running into a little bit of an issue. I'm, this is the first dash that I've ever taken out. So obviously I'm learning as I'm going. And there's just, I've gotten all the bolts for free. Like, as you can tell, I just want to give you a one quick demonstration. If I grab the dash right here, which is metal clearly underneath, if you grab the dash, everything wants to come with it. Even up top, you can see that it's clearly free, but it's right here that's causing my problem. So, then even over here, like this side is nice and free. I took out that bolt there. I can't find another bolt. There's other bolts there. Got that bolt up top, but it's funny because this piece is separate than this piece. Uh, if you move them side to side, you'll see that this one moves separate from this. So anyways, it's just giving my head a real spin because like I'm, I'm so close I can taste it, but it just got really freaking cold and then it started snowing for a bit. So the battery's about to die soon. So I think this is where I'm going to call it for this video. I was going to end the video. Looks like I was reading some forms, spent the last 10 minutes just to figure it out while I was sitting out here. And I found out what the problem was. So, I didn't re I, obviously I knew that this piece was separate from the one up top. But I thought that the top piece was bolted down after you take this off. But that is surely not the case. What I did was I got my little pry bar and I pried that up. Uh, obviously you make sure that you wanna get that one top one done first so that way that this piece can be removed and then you go along and you bring it up. So let's quickly take that off just to see if that's, um, they said there's gonna be two or three bolts underneath that that comes off. And then, or from my understanding, I did the rest of the dash completely um, right. So, anyways, let's get that off and get this dash on. Uh, there is, a, in fact, a bolt right there. There's another one in the middle that I saw, and then one at the end. So, I'm just going to quickly take that off. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to film it, just because the battery is running low. Alright, so, that was the problem that I was trying to uh, face this whole time. As you can see, with this being up and out of the way, I unbolted those three bolts. It looked like all three was broken. So again, I'm probably gonna have to use that plastic uh, wall like I was talking about, repatch that just to give it some more strength and more uh, rigidity to the dash, going over bumps and stuff like that. I don't want it to cause a problem. So all in a sense, this should just be uh, be able to pull right out. So this is where it's uh, you know now getting exciting. You know, what I've been waiting for. So all right, but that's gonna be it for today's video. Again, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm gonna continue this and just completely get this dash out. So you guys have a great night, and we'll see you soon. Peace.